What's up guys, Mike Tierney here from Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about radiant heaters and convection heaters. So you're in the market for a heater, lots of them on the market, what are you looking for? So in this episode we're going to talk about heaters that are radiant style. What is a radiant heater? Well it's any heater that produces a heat source basically directly in front of it and slightly around it. From there, that body that's getting warmed up or that part that's getting warm will start to radiate out from there. So it's a very localized source. So you don't heat super large shops. You're only gonna heat the workbench that you might be working at or if you're out ice fishing and you're heating the ice shack or a small hunting shack. So we're gonna kinda go through a few of the, uh, the options, lots of them on the market. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about the gas powered, in this case propane, as well as options when it comes to uh, electrical. So some electric are irradiant, some propane models are also irradiant. So the old, uh, everybody knows about them, basically the buddy heaters. So there's a bunch of different buddy heaters in their lineups. So you've got a little buddy, the hunting buddy, the big buddy. Um, the tank top buddy, there's a golf buddy, there's all different kinds of buddy lines. They're all radiant heat. They're designed to attach a propane tank. On the smaller units, you're using a one pound tank. On the larger big buddy, you can connect a 20 pound tank with a filter in line and uh, get more capacity out of that heater. The big buddy also has two one, one pound propane tanks that you can attach. But in this case, one small camping propane tank You've got a cone that heats up, you've got a dial that will allow you to have a higher low setting and it's going to heat what's in front of you. So not much for our behind it, so you need to have this facing whatever it is that you want to heat. You will get some heat obviously because it rises, uh, heat above it, but typically all it's going to do is heat the surrounding area that's out in front of it. There's a new one on the, on the market this year. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a two-part thing if you want it to be. Uh, for now, they have the actual heater. It's called a flex heater. So what makes this one a bit different is it has a similar cone like the, bi the big buddy or the little buddy, but except it's now able to heat out to the sides. So whereas the little buddy always out the front, now this can actually have an area that it's going to heat more of a, in a, a cone heating style. But what's really cool about this is if you choose to buy the attachment, we have a stove attachment now that can be added to the heater. So it's basically got its own control. If you want to cook while you're out, uh, you know, say hunting or ice fishing or whatever it is you're doing activities outside, maybe a uh, you know, an early winter camping trip or whatever that looks like. If you want to cook with all in the same unit without having a whole bunch of different propane attachments and connections and tanks, you can just feed off of your flex heater to your stove attachment. And it's got a really nice little quick coupler attachment that connects into the side of the heater. The only thing with that is you can't use the heater and the flex stove at the same time. You have a control dial here that will have the heat side as well as the stove side. So if you choose to go and cook, you will have to turn the dial to the stove application. So you'll have to cut your heat off just for the time that you're going to be cooking. But you're going to get some heat out of the, uh, the stove as it's uh, cooking anyways. So that should maintain it. They have an electric igniter. Uh, you'll have to install a battery that comes with the, with the grouping of products and uh, basically just hold it down, connect it, it turns on and you have your heat. What's really neat about these two is, you know, things if you're traveling, you don't want to have a whole handful of a lot of stuff. This actually just connects underneath by a clamp system and then you can take it all in one piece. There are future expansions for other products that will be coming at some point that connect to the top brackets. So for now, it's just the flex stove and the, uh, the heater itself. So those are kind of those standard radiant heats. Now, if you just want to go really bare bones 
and just bring a propane tank out. You can also have your on tank direct connect um, heater. So again, it's going to heat, you know, around it and above it. Um, you could probably rig something up and, you know, put a little pot on top, maybe cook something while you're doing it. You just got to be careful that you're not spilling on the, the element. If radiant isn't going to satisfy that space that you're going to be working with when it comes to the portable side of radiant heat, you've also got an option when it comes to the convection. Probably my favorite type of heater for portability. Um, I use one of these when I'm out ice fishing. I have one uh, that uh, when we're working around in the shops. Hands down, this is one of the most efficient way to heat a small space but also quite large um, depending on its BTU ratings they're usually you know available in a couple of different ranges but uh, the beauty about these is they typically have almost a flat top so you can put a grill on if you do want to go and uh, do some cooking while you're out in the bush or out on the lake they have like next to no moving parts there's a dial a little piezo button you connect the, uh, the, the propane and you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about a fan running. There's no power required. Um, it's basically made out of, you know, a nice material, all tin. It doesn't take long to cool down. So if you need to be moving, if you're more portable when it comes to ice fishing, you're going here, there and everywhere. You can uh, just a couple of minutes and this thing's cool again. You can nest it. So when it's in storage, this basically goes down half its distance. When you're going to use it, you must lift this up. Otherwise, the convection is not going to work properly. And basically how it works is simply cool air will come down into the, the venting down in all around it. It's going to superheat that with the element that's inside. And then our warm air comes out the top. So it just starts to come. And in fact, sitting in my garage, it almost feels like there's a fan blowing from that convection of air starting to churn and it'll feel like it's got a breeze and it heats a room up super quick. Um, it's great if you're going to be working on, you know, equipment that uh, may have been sitting outside for a while and you want to heat that area up. It contains the flames. So you're not having to worry about flames coming out the end of a tube or out the end of the, you know, the fronts. So um, hands down for me, this is one of the most efficient heaters that I would purchase, especially if I want to be more portable. Now, when it comes to radiant heat for the electric side, so you've probably seen them, bars, patios, they've got, you know, big glowing tubes blowing down on you if you're, uh, you know, a little chilly out having a, you know, a drink or two or out with the family. We also carry a line, a, a bunch of different models, depending on the application of radiant tube style heaters. So these are a 120 plug. In this case, this is a 120 plug. It will just plug directly into a standard wall outlet. You want to try to stay away from using an extension cord with these because they do draw quite a bit. Don't forget. We're using that power to convert into heat because we're not using a flame source or a fuel source. So just be mindful not to use, uh, you know, small gauge um, extension cords or try to refrain from using an extension cord, uh, period. This model here also has uh, a mounting bracket down below so we can mount that up, up into the, the ceiling or on a wall and we can angle that heat down depending on where we're at. It has a draw pull on the side here so that you can reach up if it's slightly higher than, you know, face height or reach height, it will have a, a draw pull so you can turn it on and off. Another new option that we have that's new to this year is a mountable radiant heater with a couple of lights. This one also comes with a remote control that you can re use the, the remote if it's slightly higher. And it also has a draw pole so that you can turn it on and off um, as required manually. Again, this is another 
120 volt plug. And uh, again, try to refrain from using extension cords. If you're uh, you know, installing these out on patios, maybe you got a three or four season um, area that you're sitting in, these would be perfect to take the chill off, um, even in the fall time uh, with a little bit of light source. There are many others. It's just, you know, what is gonna suit your need? Keep in mind, they're only gonna heat a very small area. They're not gonna heat a huge shop. There are huge radiant shop heaters that are either electric or gas. Um, those are available in other forms, but uh, we're just not showcasing them at this point. Now, one last thing about heaters that use fuel. Okay, so we wanna make sure that there's some safety involved. Anytime we're burning fuels, whether in this case it's propane or any other type of fuel that we're gonna use in other types of heaters, we have to bring fresh air into the space that we are heating. Um, it's recommended for every 100,000 BTUs that a two to three square foot opening of fresh air comes in. Just to put that into quick context, if you're in your garage, you have a 16 foot standard double door garage or double garage, that's cracking that door two to three inches. So it's not opening it wide open. We just need to bring good fresh air in because carbon monoxide starts to form. And then of course, that's, uh, that's not good for our health. So just be mindful as we burn fuels, carbon monoxide um, is, uh, is present. A lot of these models will have a low oxygen sensor shut down. So if you forget or carbon monoxide starts to build up, just look at the specs while you're looking at the boxes. They will tell you all of that, that safety information or go on the website and look at the manuals. Always be preventative for carbon monoxide. When it comes to the electrical units, they're not producing carbon monoxide, but you do want to be mindful of the potentials of fires, breakers popping, depending on your electrical system. Tipping over, got to make sure that they don't tip over. A lot of them do have anti-tip over shutoffs, but again, if you're, you know, kicking around, kids are playing, get spilt over, make sure that, um, you know, you've got the right heater for those applications. Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. We'll see you next time.